All right, welcome to Pass the Mic for Friday, February 9th, 2024, episode 104. We are on Zoom. Mr. Michael Gervasi, how are you? What's up? I hope nobody watches this on YouTube. I'm a little sloppy right now. It's late in the day. Well, I, I do post them to the YouTube because maybe one day we'll hit it viral. And it won't maybe. just be me. Won't be me, Bobby Brown. It will be new edition. And we'll, uh, <laughs> well, it, by the way, happy birthday, Bobby Brown, earlier this week. Yeah, we had a little controversy with Bobby Brown. Yes, um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll pose that question to our listeners. I, okay. I still already forget the name of the song that you picked. But no. um, feedback from last week. Um, we got Lots a, um, of it. A lots of feedback. Elizabeth Pate reached out. She talked about the Tim Tebow event, which is like a prom that they put on for special needs kids. She still has this relationship with a, a student that was, or a, a young student that was at that, that actually made the cake for her daughter, Ariana. Congratulations, valedictorian, Carlson High School. Valedictorian, yeah. Violating, we're violating FERPA by giving that information right. out. And, and man, to think about what they've experienced this year with her, valedictorian and homecoming queen. I know. Valedictorian yes. homecoming queen accepted in the U of M nursing program. The trifecta uh, right there, yeah. I did write the letter to a wreck. Oh, and finalists for that MHSAA scholar athlete. That's very rare. I think there's only like 60-some finalists. Wow, yeah. She's killing so, it. She is. What a year, and it's only uh, February. But she mentioned the Tim Tebow event, which sounds like a great event. Of course, we had Rob Raymond on last week who did a great job talking about uh, shooting with the stars. I ran into Teresa Camilleri at uh, Beer Haven Friday night, told her about the episode because she was mentioned as yeah. a founding uh, member of that group. Uh, also, shout out to Elizabeth Pate for posting the picture of the Reese's. She, I, I post, I think I posted it, but I stole the picture from her. And so I want to give credit. She found the Reese's heart, the pink heart. Is it a heart? Turned what, upside- what does it look like? I'm a little confused. <laughs> well, <Robert. laughs> anyone can go to our Facebook page and take a look at it. Okay. It is a pink heart, uh, right. and, and uh, Elizabeth totally agreed. As someone that works in the medical field, with the rumors going around about what the upside down pink heart could look like from Re- again, I've said it before. Just buy regular Reese's cups. You, you, there's no need to get anything else. The peanut You're, butter ratio is too much. You are nuts if you buy anything else. <laughs> Could that be the logo? The pink heart. <laughs> We're border. We're not in school, so maybe we can be a little less family friendly. We're Great not. Great balls of fire. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. Uh, wh- what else do you got for this week? So we got a lot. First off, Aaron Torres got on us about. She was in my notes. Six oh five, and then Rendog got went after me at like six oh six. Like these two were at me right away. So Aaron was upset. Uh, well, we oh. we we stated that Tom Pack is the third member past the mic. Yeah. And sh- and, and, and in all fairness, Aaron Torres was there from day one. Uh, created she is the creator of the original logo she created yeah. the holiday logo um she's like a very good technical artist she's helped us out with a lot of our technical art things i think when we said the third member of past the mic we were talking about like on air uh personality yeah. i guess in a way so no offense she does a great job and she really was what was going on last week is um a staff member in our studio b there's windows that people can see in much like the today show and other hot shows we follow sure. their lead yeah and, and we're professionals so when people want to act like a fool or a doofus, like Kelly Sims was, I'm not afraid to uh, throw names around and dance okay. in front of the window. We're professionals. We're we're 103 episodes in. This isn't you know, this isn't affecting us. Miss Torres was out there, not engaging as much of the activity, and that's who we sort of mentioned and gave a little. And you, I believe the line you used was, "She will never be head of the department." That was a different De- okay. De- yeah. Department head lines for some reason rub people rub people the wrong yeah, that, way. That building. really for whatever reason. Okay, you got anything else? Because I got a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you can go ahead. I've been stealing the airtime. No, it's all right. If you got more, those, can... no, those are my two. I just wanted to. Those were the two on my notes. God, I, and again, I, I okay. So Ren Dog, he didn't explain why, but he would said I was way off on my take. Bad take, he said. The middle so, finger. Yeah, the middle finger. Mr. Mr. Max Bailey called me Mr. Sensitive. I thought that 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 kind of made me laugh. He thought the front Safford comment was funny. Uh, and again, there's so many here that, uh, you know, we talked about Taylor Swift. Max made the point. They showed Brock Purdy's parents. Why aren't people upset about that? I think that's a very valid point by Max. Um, Gary Bailey, new listener, lo- loves the show. Comment, on, mo- comment on the Facebook page. Yeah, he um, mentioned Dan Marino never getting back to the Super Bowl. I think that Lions fans really need to remember that. Now, again, yeah. I I do think, and if I was betting, little – what we in the biz call foreshadowing. If I was betting, I would say that they're gonna they're gonna still compete at a high level. Whether how far they get, who knows? But I think that's a cautionary tale for for Lions fans. Like this. The, is the not fact of the matter is, 
it's just hard to get there. Only yes, one team is. out of the conference gets there every year. So it's not like we're not, this isn't the original six of the NHL. No. Okay. No. Uh, Denise Browning commented. She, she was surprised that guys did the same thing with Valentine's. I saw her at my Qantas meeting. I forgot to bring up the Valentine's day. And yes, we did do that. We did have a special um, people. You know, I, I think, so we had a couple people. So Elizabeth Pate also mentioned, and I was gathering my notes here. I'm sure you mentioned this. That the ta- Rob talking about his mom really got to her a little bit. Uh, Wyatt Zooks mentioned the show, had him laughing and and got a little emotional as well. Yeah. So the show really touched some, some people. You know, it's uh, a good show when you have people laughing and crying. Yeah. Um, uh, Jill Burgai laughing at the um, Reese's. The, uh, Reese's. You know what? Maybe on the fifteenth, I'll go buy a couple and we can eat one on air. <laughs> Next episode, no, we do have to. No, no. You could do that. that I, I mean, I guess if we're in the studio, nobody gets whatever. Okay. Um, I so yeah, this was. I have a lot here. I want one more. Uh, Scott Bachman. I ran into him. He loves the show. You know, and he just wanted to kind of comment from way back, and I wanted to bring this up. I was going to save this as a hot mic, but I changed my mind today. He mentioned the the um, natural synergy between organized labor that he is a part of, you know, with Ford and uh, teachers and how we really should be rooting for each other. And I think we do for the most part, but I, I, I really think that that that's something that we, you know, when, when, you know, uh, what, what is the expression? All, uh, all tides lift tides, high tides, lift all boats, something along those lines. Uh, my favorite is the former, I've said it before on here, Paul Wellstone's we all do better when we all do better. We all do better. We all do better. The late Paul Wellstone. You know, if you're and, not in the top one percent, you should be. I, I it's like whenever, like lately, they did the bonus profit sharing checks. General Motors, I think, released it ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm ecstatic for those people. Good for those people. And right. I hate when you read the comments and things, and people have to. First of all, we've said this before about every profession. Go put your name in a GM. Yeah, right. Like I don't know what else to tell you. Like if someone is middle class, working class, whatever they get, more power. And that's the way I will always be. I don't yeah, care. Cheer for them. We all. I, I cheer for them all the time. Yep. Yep. Even so, if it's better than what I get, I, that's not the point. I don't want to go work for GM. That's yeah. not what I wanted to do. Right. Right. So, um, I had one more. Kent Sakura, maybe that broke the record last week for mentions in an episode. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> we, we, right. Well, of course, I had the problem with the, the Coney Island to start off. I think we yeah. mentioned the Etzel Ford game. There, Kent yeah. Sakura, he texted us. He had multiple. Uh, mentions in last week's episode. He's been All good. Really upset with you lately. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, the Coney Island thing will fade. Yeah, he'll get over it. So, so will Max. <laughs> uh, so, you ready for my Mike of the Week? Or is, Let's go. Uh, we had a lot of feedback. All right, Mike of the Week. It's Super Bowl. Uh, are, are we allowed to say that? Isn't it trademarked? I hope. Yeah. Hope Roger Goodell doesn't come after us. It is Super Bowl Sunday this Sunday. Um, no teams of our rooting are involved. So I still thought I'd go NFL. Okay. So are you familiar with what might be the best draft class of all time in NFL history? Is it 83? I'm talking about for one team, not for a whole oh, draft. No, I'm not. I'm not. Many people say it's the 1974 Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, okay. I'm going to read this resume. First round, Lynn oh, Swan. I know. Okay. First round, Lynn Swan. Second round, Jack Lambert. I know where you're going. Fourth round, John Stallworth. I'm going to skip the fifth round. Okay. And then undrafted. So I don't know if this still counts because back then there were so many rounds. Yeah. But then there were still undrafted free agents. Uh, Donnie Shell was a safety they picked up, also in the Hall of Fame. And then in the fifth round out of the University of Wisconsin, I believe. Um, yes, Wisconsin. Uh, Mike Webster. Mike Webster. Uh, a book in 74 till the early 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, a, and then they went right after him to Dramani Dawson, which is amazing. But Mike Webster... Unfortunately, if you watch the movie with, uh, isn't it Will Smith about the CTE? Concussion, yeah. Uh, he's a major uh, yeah. aspect of that movie because his, literally, his demise is, uh, to read about it, is gut oh, awesome. But when you play that many years and the level he played, and he was a monster center and just bashing and bashing and bashing. Uh, but he was a an amazing uh, center for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Played his, I think he wrapped up. Maybe he had a. I'm looking at the debt. He did play 89, 90 in Kansas City. 
Um, I don't think we used him, right? I'm, I'm, I think we've talked about him before, but I don't think I don't think him. so. But you know what? For what he put his body through, if if we did, he deserved. Even it. if I did use him, I wanted to bring him back up because I wanted to bring that draft class back that's up. Fine. So that's okay. Because um, when I when I re- read that Kansas City thing, I think I might have brought him back up. So if we did double up, my fault, my mistake. We're a lot. We let guests double up. So yeah. Um, this week's education topic, February, is Black History Month. So I uh, I do some stuff in the library. I want to just talk to you about. Um, your thoughts on it and coming out of the world of history, um, why you feel it's important, and um, just along those lines. So what do you got for me? So, you know, a- as a history teacher, um, you know, I, I had a former student come in today, and um, he's going to become a teacher, and he's going to actually be doing some observing for the rest of the school year. Every now and again, he has to get an X amount of hours in. And we just started talking a little bit about different issues. And, you know, it became very clear to me very quickly that we don't agree on a lot of things. And that's, but that's okay. Um, I think this is where the power of empathy comes into play of just in a social studies class, being able to teach the idea of not just seeing the world from your own unique point of view, but being able to step out of your shoes and see it from somebody else's. And I think that's the the importance of Black History Month. Uh, You know, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into getting, you know, Black history into the curriculum, period. You know, it it was was history in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, kudos to all the folks that really pushed for this. It took a long time. You know, our former uh, principal, Bill Stevenson, said a really nice article to the department the other day kind of going into this. And I I think an area like this needs it more than most. Um, I haven't heard this question recently, but it came up quite often in my younger years. Well, why don't we have a white history month? Why don't we have a white entertainment television? You know, and I'm not going to, I'll spare you and the listener the, the answer that I gave this person. I think it gives the ability to know what people have gone through. Uh, it doesn't take away from anybody else's history to learn about, you know, black history. And, and frankly, Mike, I, I I hope this becomes a stepping stone. You know, it, it states other histories as well. And I think that's a legitimate point of view. Okay, there's there's a hell of a story to be told from Native American point of view, and a lot of other groups in, included. So it, it doesn't take away from anybody, but there's certainly a unique history from the African American experience, beginning with the just the basic idea that this is the one group of people that really didn't come here for the same reason that my family did, which was to make, you know, to make a better life for themselves voluntarily and things like that. And to understand that experience and understand that this this history of oppression lasted a long time, longer than much, much longer. Legally speaking, you're looking at almost 90 percent of the history where this group of people were told in some way, shape or form, you are not equal. And so it, it has become a challenge. I think it's getting more challenging as time goes on because of the sensitive times we live in. And there's parts of this country where people really truly feel like this should not be taught at all. Uh, and, and just, I, I'm not sure what their objective is. I'm sure it's not to take away all African-American history, but I think it's the notion that we, you know, it's American history. And I hear that a lot, but you really can't ignore the plight of African Americans, and so I try to impart that all the time to the students, you know, in, in a way that hopefully teaches some more understanding. And again, you know, I always come back to this: um, the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. What year were you born, Mike? 75. 75. You're right. This and, is not uh, ancient. This is not ancient history. Right. Some of the stuff you hear about, the horrors you hear about. Um, I go so along with my role as both an ex English teacher and a librarian. When I went through high school, I can't even remember if I read one African American author right. four years through four years of high school. Okay, mm-hmm. then I even get to Eastern Michigan University in a um, you know multicultural you know university level, and a lot of my intro lit classes and lit classes very little. It wasn't that until I took like African American studies that I or you know an African American lit class, which was part that I really got a lot of it. And there's a lot out there, and I, and I think this is what people don't understand. And things have obviously gotten better from the 1990s education to to now. Uh, but that's why that month was by the month was needed. I mean, I went as through 18, I never read an African American author ever, sure. you know, uh, that was assigned. Okay. And so th- that's ridiculous. That That is, th- there's no other way to put it. No other and, word and, you know, it. And, and, you know, and, and, and in all honesty, mainly white male authors, not even female authors. Yeah. Okay. Um, so th- that was clearly a problem and an issue. And 
there are there is a lot of talent and thankfully what i noticed going forward in the language arts department is we have a lot more modern authors yeah. yes we have the, the, we you know obviously you still read shakespeare and obviously you still have f scott fitzgerald and the great gatsby but we have more modern authors we have um you know book club which gives kids options to read um so that was the purpose of the month when you said it's 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 there because there was a deficiency built into the education system whether people want to admit it or not because there were these resources were available, these books were available. So to showcase it one month does no harm. Okay. Nothing is there's no agenda being shoved down anybody's throats. No. Um, and it's important to learn this stuff and understand it. And I think that is it better than it was, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Yes, it was better, but it there's no harm in improving and pushing forward with it. And I think that's to me, that's why it's important. That's why. You know, I do a showcase. That's why um, there's a um, my state organization, uh, the Michigan Association of School Librarians, every year puts out a myself and books list. That's MI, like Michigan, yeah. and it's under um, it's underrepresented. It's books that have underrepresented character bases. So meaning that you know, not the normal uh, characters that you normally see in books, but people that other minority groups that normally aren't the focus of a book or for focus of a novel, this book list is put out. And I've purchased heavily off that list so that other people can see other characters or read about other characters that are there. I just think it's uh, extremely important. We're very fortunate here in Michigan um, with some of the museums that we have because thankfully as a, uh, you know, a, a Northern state that has a very strong African-American history um, you know, from the, thankfully, because of the auto industry, right? Like once, you know, yeah. the civil rights movement passed and people realized maybe we need to get out of the South and come to the North. And then there were auto plants here. And, you know, we have like the African-American Museum. We have uh, the Motown Museum. You know, we have the Henry Ford, which is, um, um, has great showcases and, you know, displays of a lot of the stuff that has to do with civil rights. So we're fortunate in the area we're from, I think, very fortunate to locally be able to, you know, bring our kids to see stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I always still think back to that visit when the famous visit where Nate met Obama, they went to the Henry Ford, right? And there's that photo of him on Rosa Parks' bus. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? It's mm -hmm. not, not of Nate, of President Obama. Of course. Right. Uh, <laughs> sitting on the bus, you know, and I, I, it's a great photo. If you go look it up, it's just sort of him sort of taking it all in. You know what I mean? And I think it's, uh, it just says a lot about our area. I, I am thankful for the area we live in that um, I think it's a little more accepted up here, thankfully, yeah. and, um, and easier to teach and present because we have a lot of actual resources here. We do. And Again, it doesn't take away from it, it, it's it's contributed the, the contributions learning about these experiences, and I think it makes us much more well rounded individuals. You know, uh, you mentioned college. I, I just think of going to college, and I I became so much better when I got to know more people. And you know, the other part of this is we're a predominantly white district, and so the I mean, our kids get along pretty well, and I think younger people are seeing race in general less and less. Um, and, and, you know, generally that's a good thing. I, I think back to my grandfather who a lot of times didn't know anybody except by their ethnicity, the Polish fellow you're friends with. Yeah. Yeah. Like not out of, not out of being derogatory, no, but just, just, that's the way they, right. That's how they remember um, people. But putting authors in their hands, you know, this is now exposing students to voices from the African-American community or other voices, you know, whether it's gender, whatever the case may be, that they're not exposed to you. Th stop and think about African Americans. If your only exposure is LeBron James, you know that's it, it, that's not you, it, as great as he is at a sport. And I think he does some certainly does some wonderful things in, in the communities, and socially, and so forth and so on. You know, now you're getting that extra exposure. And I think that helps develop you as a person. So whenever you, whatever walk of life, when you know more, whether it's people or cultures or so forth and so on, you know more and you're better for it. And I think this is good for everybody. Well said, well said. We'd love to hear what some of our people think. Maybe they've incurred and what they encountered in their education and maybe what they're encountering in their own yeah. kids' education now. That's what I'd love to hear. All right, overrated, underrated. Before we get to overrated, underrated, I'm going to correct myself. I did use Mike Webster, so I'm going to change it quickly here on the fly. Another Super Bowl champion, another, this time a wide receiver, Hall of Famer, I'm pretty sure. Uh, sometimes got in a little trouble back in the day. Worked for NFL Network, you know what I'm talking about, from the U. I think he's been used. 
Michael Irvin has not been used. He has not been used? I was going to use him a few weeks back. Oh, okay. Right okay. <laughs> so I kept him in my back pocket. So All Michael right. Irvin is my Mike of the Week. I like him on TV. He's, uh, I think he's got such personality, yeah. He's got I, personality. I hope he's not getting in trouble still. There is, you know, uh, he's, you know, he, he, he's always, uh, he's Michael Irvin. It's just, it's, it's Mike. I always he, thought back in the day, you know, like he didn't, he never really seemed as fast as like some of the other breakaway wide. You know what no, I mean? No, he didn't. He was more of like a, just a strong, he would catch anything you threw at him. Would. Strong, but he wasn't like breakaway speed guy. I think the, the Dennis Hopper commercial, I think he was talking about him. You know what? I was going to look it up, but I'm going to let the listener. It's like a freight train with stick em. I don't know if the, oh, that might have been Sterling Sharp now that I think about it. But that's yeah, but that, you I, know, the receivers were like that like a little bit back then. They're, they weren't as, you know, you, you'd you expect. And, and part of it, too, is I, we, I called you in my office. Peter King did a story. He's covered the NFL roughly 40 years. Mm-hmm. And he did the his, if he could pick one full roster, 53-man roster. And he had Heinz Ward as one of the starting receivers, yeah. which you were very surprised with. And Michael Irvin was on his bench. And he said, he was like, I know Michael Irvin's going to be angry. Uh, but he was a, I saw him win Super Bowl 30 in person with Barry Switzer's Cowboys. You did, yeah. uh, so that's my Mike of the week. I corrected myself. I did use Mike Webster before, but I didn't, I don't think I plugged the draft class. So, all right. Overrated, underrated uh, with the big game this Sunday, there's going to be a lot of big time gambling going on. And so, I wanted to know overrated, underrated gambling. I'm not a big gambler. Are you a big gambler? I am beyond not, like no. fantasy football, like your That's league it. fee. Um, what do you got as overrated for gambling? So you know these new draft uh, sites or apps, uh, DraftKings and whatever else is out there. I don't even know the names offhand, but we see them all the time in commercials. Uh, I, I I just in general, I think these things. You know, and I know you. you I don't know if you're going to talk about the 60 Minutes episode. I didn't watch it. I know you. you you had mentioned it to me aside from that part of it where it's it's really people are becoming addicted younger people um it's kind of twofold number one i don't i this is almost like fantasy football now where everybody has to tell you about their little prop bets and uh okay here we go i gotta listen to this one um so that's the first thing and the second thing is you know 97 one they do a whole like segment on these type of bets. And it's, it's frankly, to me, it's boring. It bores me to tears and I, I've, I've now just turned it. So I, I just think this is create. I, I just, man. And again, it's, it's a preference. Overrated doesn't mean bad. I'm sure I'm going to get blasted from this by our, our gambling listeners. Wally's not going to be happy with me right now. Cause he and I talked about writing books about this. We have some funny uh, t- book titles, but I just, uh, hearing about all this stuff is just, it's too much for me. So that's my overrated. You know, I'm going to, I just put it all in as sports betting. And I did, if you didn't watch 60 minutes, it's last week. I listened to it. They're po- they, they basically produce the episode as a podcast every Monday morning. I just listened to it on my walk. And the guy that uh, the people they were talking to, the numbers are just, uh, it's just too easy to be done. You know, 10 years ago, it was hard to place a bet, a legal bet. You know what yeah. I mean? It was hard. It was very hard. Right. Like unless you were in Vegas, um, you know, or unless you, you know, to place a legal bet, it was hard. And now, I mean, you can do it as easy as ordering food on your phone, even easier. Cause like, there's no, you don't have to go do anything for the third party. Right. And like, I think you mentioned all these people that are saying they're winning. They're not, they're, they're, they're not, I mean, they might be individually, but as a whole, they're not, that's the way, that's the way like casinos, the casinos would not stay in business. Right. Right. If they were a losing operation, these apps and phones would not stay in business. So there are people that are losing money. And in the long run, the algorithms and the data, these places know what they're doing. And to me, you know, again, I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade because of my wife's profession. I can't even really get involved in it, which is a good thing. So I don't even have, I haven't even tried it and I don't plan on it. I mean, years ago when I was in Vegas, I placed a bet at a sports book. You know, and, you know, you get the little slip, you go watch the game and then you turned it in or you threw it away. Now yeah. like you can all of a sudden you can bet the third quarter, bet the fourth quarter. Will, you know, Dan Campbell pun on this drive. You know, it's crazy yeah. how much stuff is out there. And they're, the, it's all AI changing these lines and spreads as the moment's going. So the, the, the house is always winning. So that, I'm with you on that sports betting. What do you got is underrated? You know, I, it's funny because I, the aforementioned Nate Piotti, um, he and I have done some of these. I, I think it's really cool doing this. I don't know the first person I did this with. I suspect it's Deontay uh, in Arizona. He came on the show uh, via text message. And then, you know, Isaiah Wright, a student at Carlson, he and I do these bets with it all the time. And I, I take bets I know I'm going to lose 
because I feel like it helps me get in shape. It's doing bets that involve like push-ups or, you know, those type of things. And it's pretty cool. So right now, Nate Piotti or so owes me 60. Um, and, and these are really cool. These are neat bets. Um, you know, I have no problem betting on the Pistons and Lakers, I, even though I know the Pistons are going to lose because it's sort of a man. Yeah, I'll take that bet. You know, it's, it's it makes me feel strong. And, you know, and, and I can do these push-ups. We video ourselves. I always video myself in awkward positions. People comment on that all the time. Um but you know it's 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 pretty neat. So I'm I'm saying those type of bets are pretty cool. The bets that involve things like that with, that are beneficial to us. Um, I like that. That's a good one. And no, no harm, no foul, unless right. you can't do a push up. Um, Nate better start paying up on those, or someone's gonna. Bust I know it's been out. a while. We the, the Lions and Chiefs played in September. <laughs> All right, my underrated, and I've been to Vegas a couple times, like I mentioned. And the most recent time was right before the COVID lockdown. Uh, but I also went like early in my teaching career, like 98, 99, like the first time I went, I was like 24 years old, 23 years old. And I remember the first time I went, I went down to old Fremont street, which is downtown. And there were some, I mean, it was, uh, it's not like it is now they've rebuilt a lot of it. And there was just some old places. And even back then, even on the strip, there were some cheap table games, low cost, good odds. And those are all gone. That's all gone. It's all like if you go now or if you go to the places in Detroit, you're talking like a minimum bet on a weekend is $25 for a hand of blackjack, $25 a hand. Now, yeah. you know, I get it. You got to bet money to make money. I get it too. You don't want to sit there and bet a dollar a hand on blackjack. I totally right. get that. But back in the day, you could play $5 blackjack, like on old, on Fremont street with two hands, two hand, two deck hands, you know, play it in your hand. And, you know, the rules have gotten so tight because everything is, you know, data driven. It, it's not even really that fun anymore. Like when I went to Windsor this last time with my, with Chloe for her 19th birthday. And I think the ta the lowest table I saw there might've been 15, maybe 20, I don't know, Canadian, which is, you know, a little less. I just went to one of the, they have like machines of blackjack, like where a video person deals. And I put like $50 in there and you could play. I played like five bucks a hand, you know, and you could, you know, you just go back and forth and double a few times here. But I, I think underrated was the old, cheap casinos back in the day or the low tables where you could go and play a little bit and not have to be this but now it's there's i mean and i get it i, I it's economic like you, yeah. you want you'd rather have 25 dollar tables because people are losing more when right. they're betting 25 dollars right. a hand you know so that's what i miss um, and even like you know back then too even in vegas there were cheap restaurants food was cheap because they all they made they wanted to eat all their money everything's expensive now it's not like it was in the day so yeah. good luck to those people out there this weekend um gambling away all right, hot mic take. What do you got for us this week? Oh, well, I, I was caught between two. Uh, I was going to discuss the uh, Oxford situation, but I, I think I hold off on that. Um, okay, I'm going to send us out on a good note, I, and this is. Uh, I think the listener needs to know something, Mike. So I'm going to I'm going to pay you the ultimate compliments here. The listener needs to know how much work you put into this. Uh, so I'm letting that per the, you know all the regular listeners, you put the show out. Um, you you set it up at you know before six in the morning, frankly, so the Ren Dog could come on at six oh five and blast me for my opinions. Um, everything that you do is greatly appreciated, and I wanted the listener to know how much you actually do. So I am grateful for that. I think the listener needs to know that. Um, so I thank you, and I, I, I'm sure the listeners do as well. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'm going to be full disclosure. We sort of learned baptism by fire, right? Like we talk about our first episode and how it probably wasn't that great. The audio episodes, Pat Morrow has uh, let us use some great equipment, like stuff that we could never afford on the past the mic budget of zero dollars. And uh, you just slide a mini micro SD card in. I take it home, put it on my MacBook. I found that music. And now once the first episode's done, it's just drag and drop. Okay. These video episodes a little longer because I got to edit the video because we want it to be on YouTube. So it is a little bit extra work, but I mean, it's not like I'm sitting here uh, but you know we do want I do we do we we talked about this uh, when we were on the um, other show with uh, Bryce and Sauce uh, about the importance of not missing weeks. We don't like to miss weeks uh, because it just breaks up the we flow. Right. It, it, right. And so um, you know it's really important to us to get this on. And you know we both have busy schedules. You have uh, two kids in school that are busy and doing things. You know we both do extras. Uh, you know, so it, it's hard. We want this stuff in and I appreciate the kind words, but even like, you know, we don't just, and we also don't just come on here. We talk and uh, plan out episodes. We're already planning next week's episode because we got a guest lined up. So I appreciate the kind words. Um, okay. So you were, that was very kind. I, I'm going to go back something that, because Elizabeth Pate mentioned, you mentioned one of the things, don't 
be afraid to talk politics. I'm going to talk politics. Oh no. I don't know so what a certain I don't know what a certain party wants the current administration to do about the border when one of the most conservative senators from one of the most conservative states in the country, Oklahoma. All right, this poor guy went out there and negotiated a bill and they're leaving him out to, to dry. Senator Langford, oh, I believe, yeah. is mm -hmm. again, and I again we've not we've hidden we haven't hidden our politics on our sleeve totally it seems like a very outstanding guy now you may not agree with his politics or anything, but you can't say anything about his person his, sure. he seems to be a good person and there's he, he and he's representing a very conservative state so i get it he's doing what his job is sure totally get it so i'm not going to sit here the other guy from oklahoma is a little oh man he, yeah. he got into those fights with the teamster president yeah. go check those out on youtube they're pretty oh, funny yeah. uh but senator langford goes out there says hey we got let i'm going to do my job we're going to solve this problem which was what we all we ask of our politicians right yeah solve this problems he and he works with one of the more liberal senators from connecticut uh, Senator Murphy, I believe, is the Democrat that's working on it, and the 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 young lady that was a Democrat from Arizona who now is sort of an independent and has angered many Democrats. They come out with this bill that's one of the most conservative border bills in decades, right? And they he he just gets eaten up and spit out by his own by his own party, who would rather have the problem not solved. I guess I guess that that's all I'm saying. I guess I guess that's the solution. Is no solution. And it is a problem because that was the other story on 60 Minutes. So if you want to watch that 60 Minutes, the middle story was about immigration and it is a problem and, it, and it's something that you got to be careful with and you you want to protect the, your citizens of this country, but you also want to be a place of uh, what the United States has always been. Always been right. Um, so, you know, and I, I, I agree. As If I lived along the border, I'd be very upset too. If I lived in these cities where people are being sent, I'd be upset too. But you can't then say, okay, well, we're not going to let anything be solved in this problem. Like, I don't know what, I don't uh, know what the solution is. I, I think that, you know, a, a book came out, you and I talked about, not on the show, but before why we're polarized. And one of it was there, there's segments and this is, this go this is both ways. Uh, but I, clearly the mainstream of one party right now is doing this much more than the other. It, it's good business when you don't solve things. And yeah. I really believe that now with this. Yeah. It is. And it, it, it is the sole purpose of this. There's no doubt that the Democrats have let, let this thing go far too long without doing anything. Uh, there, there, yeah. Nobody could argue that. No right thinking Democrat would argue that. But now this bill, I mean, the 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 left, the loud left is really upset about this thing. And, you know, lots of potential of losing some votes on that side. Uh, and for what now? It, and it's going to get held up just it, so it, it's it just it scares me it goes back to like i think back to obamacare um when it was not liked just because it was a democratic proposal yeah. well for those of you that don't know pre-obamacare pre-existing pre conditions boom you can't be covered that was it if you are 19 to 26 okay or even if you're over 19 if you graduate once you graduated college you were off your parents insurance immediately yeah. immediately whether you like i remember when i graduated from eastern basically like american airlines said you're done like my dad was still working and could you imagine now like an 18 19 year old kid having to get, buy his own health care even though the parent like so obamacare right. did some good things in the long run like it like yeah. and and it was much more conservative than what Nixon and Kennedy talked about many years ago in the 70s yeah. like that, and it's what Romney did in Massachusetts and it yeah, yeah. it's I listen, I gotta applaud you for doing this. We've obviously we we you know, people that know us and could read through anything we're saying, but we've kind of this is you really uh I just want the problem solved. Here. I just want the problem solved. So how's the problem supposed to be solved? That's what I basically say if I was Senator Langford and I think I saw him on the Senate floor and the poor guy's still going at it, you know, like yeah. and, and I will say this, his partner in Oklahoma said if you guys are calling this guy a sell, you know, if you don't think he's a good guy, right. then I hate to say what you think about me. Yeah. And so I don't know what he's supposed to do. I don't know what Biden's supposed to do. I don't know what um, I don't know what Senator Schumer is supposed to do. I, I don't know what any of these people are supposed to do because, I mean, barring something like that, some ridiculous policy that no, you know, that no Democrat would vote for. I, I don't know what the solution is. So I guess we just have a problem until the next election. And then, like they said, like this was more conservative than the plan that was going around when Trump was president. So right. like, I don't I don't know. And that one didn't pass either. I don't know. I don't. I, I. I. Thankfully, I think this happens less at the local and state level. We've talked about that. Absolutely. Because this would this wouldn't fly. You have. You know, and part of it is you have to have a balanced budget with the state and your local government. 
you also so, have to face your constituents a lot more. You have to, you know, this is not a, you, you're, you're working much closer with these people and, and, you know, just like familiarity definitely does not breed contempt. I think when it comes to politics. So, well, I mean, I saw, I saw too, like the, the border patrol union were in support of this bill. You know, the guys that often say this is killing us down here. Right. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I guess it continues doing nothing uh, is uh, what an awful way of leadership of all involved. All right. Hot uh, Super Bowl Sunday. It is our last football pick until September. Uh, Who do you got? Brock Purdy, Patrick Mahomes. I don't know, man. I don't care. Um, let's go. Is it, let's is it, are the 49ers a slight favorite? Is that what we are back if we're talking about sports? So, yes. I know they were, but uh, man, I am still, I'm still reeling. Uh, I'm going to go San Francisco uh, 31, Kansas City Ooh. 27. All right. I'm going to go, I think it's going to be lower scoring. I think that, that if it starts to be a high scoring game, I think that's where San Francisco wins it. I just don't, I think that yeah, Kansas City defense is just, it's what they can do and frustrate people uh so i'm gonna go kansas city uh, i'll go we'll go all touchdowns 28 21 okay no. i'm not so one of the, what I'm song is usher fan. when is oh. yeah gonna be performed the open the halftime or to close the halftime Peace uh, i don't know I, see, i'm hoping for uh, that that'll close it i'm hoping for you remind me i'm sure you're not familiar with that one um uh, but i'm hope i'm hoping for that one will little john be there I mean, yeah, he will be. He will be. The, it's kind of like what you know Eminem a few years ago. Who was even the the great rap one? Who was who was the actual? Was it Snoop and Dre? And then yeah, those were the head, those were the headliners. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I maybe Usher will do something similar. I knew you would know. Yeah, you remind me kind of just go over your head. I'm sure. Great song. Burn, what is it? Burn? Is that another one of his? Uh... Yeah, burn. <laughs> <laughs> you make me. I'm still, I still. I still thought for sure Usher would have been performing at an Atlanta Super Bowl. That that's my thing. I thought that would be yeah, a theme. would make but, more but, sense. Know, what do I know? Well, thanks again. Great episode. We look. We'd love to hear what everyone hear, get your feedback. Even the Ren Dog at six oh two Eastern Standard Time. That's fine. Um, have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you next week. 